Hi, I'm Kobayashi from Sony. In this video, I'll explain how to easily create an image classification project using the Neural Network Console for Windows, an integrated development environment for deep learning. If you'd like to learn what deep learning is, or if you'd like to learn how to use the cloud version, please refer to the links in the description box of this video. So, let's create a project for image classification. In the Neural Network Console, when you create a new neural network, the first thing you do is create a new project. When you create a new program in most integrated development environments, you will probably create a new project. In the Neural Network Console as well, each time you create a neural network, you create a new project. In the Windows version, you can create a new project by clicking this New Project button. If you click here, a blank project will be created like this. Once you have created a new project, the first thing to do is to specify the dataset. Click on the dataset tab here to specify the data to be used for training. To load a new dataset, click on the Open Dataset button in this URI. Here you can see the datasets that are available as four samples. This time, we will run the training using this sample dataset. We'll show you how to prepare your own dataset in a future video. This time, we're going to load the small MNIST 4 or 9 training data for training. Click here to load it like this. As you can see, the X image has images of 4 or 9 loaded like this, and Y has numbers of 0 or 1 loaded into it. The dataset loaded here is the one introduced in the video that runs the sample project. If you can't load the dataset here, you can run the sample project in that video and you can load the dataset like this. This sample dataset is for identifying whether this input image is a 4 or a 9. It is labeled 0 for a 4 and 1 for a 9, so it is a dataset to create a classifier that can tell if it is a 9 or not. What has been loaded is a dataset for training. 1,500 images are included in this dataset. Using these 1,500 samples of data, we will build an image classifier to identify between images of 4 and 9. When training the neural network, in addition to the dataset used for training, we specify the validation dataset to check the accuracy of the trained neural network. Here, we have two datasets, Training and Validation. If you click on Validation, you will see the Validation dataset. Earlier, we loaded 1,500 samples of data for training, but in the same way, we are going to load 500 samples of data for evaluation. This time, we will load the dataset Small MNIST 4 or 9 test. Now, small MNIST 4 or 9 test has been loaded. I think it's hard to tell them apart because they're similar to the dataset we loaded for training. However, if you compare it with training, you will see that it loads other images of 4 and 9 that are not in training. 500 images have been loaded for evaluation. The dataset is now loaded. Next, we will design the neural network. To design the neural network, use the Edit tab here. In the Edit tab, you can find various functions in the component section. And you can combine these functions to design the neural network. The neural network to be designed this time will be a single-layer logistic regression, which was also present in the sample project Logistic Regression. Logistic regression can be composed of these four functions input, affine, sigmoid, and binary cross-entropy. If you want to know how to construct a neural network by combining functions, please see the video Basics of Designing Neural Network for a detailed explanation. Now let's design the neural network. This time, we will use input, affine, sigmoid, and binary cross-entropy, so we need to find these functions and drag and drop them into the main area. First, add an input layer to the computational graph by dragging and dropping it like this. Next, 
we will use an affine layer. Add an affine layer like this. Then add sigmoid and finally binary cross entropy. Now the functions have been added. These functions are not yet connected at the moment. To connect, you can drag and drop the output pin of this layer to the input pin of the next layer like this. In addition to the method introduced now, you can drag and drop the next function just below the function you are connecting from. If you place the functions like this, they will be automatically connected. We'd rather go with this one, but we can see that the Neural Network Console combines the features of two UIs, the user interface of the graph and the interface for connecting blocks. Either way, I hope you will use the method that is intuitive to you. This time, I added input affine sigmoid and binary cross entropy by dragging and dropping, but the easiest way is to add by double clicking. Like this, double clicking on input affine sigmoid or binary cross entropy will add a new layer just below the previously selected layer. Also, there are about 100 of these functions, so if you have trouble finding them, you can narrow down your search by entering the text here. For example, if you want to search for a sigmoid, you can enter sigmoid here like this, and the functions such as sigmoid function of activation will be displayed here as a result of the narrowed search. The necessary functions Input, affine, sigmoid, and binary cross entropy are now implemented. Next, we will edit the properties of the area. Our goal now is to input images of 4 and 9 and determine if it is a 9 or not. So the number of output neurons required here is only 1, which indicates whether the image is 9 or not. By default, the number of output neurons of this affine is set to 100, so we will change the number of output neurons to 1. To change the number of output neurons, click on affine and the properties of affine will be displayed in the bottom left corner of the screen like this. The third property, outshape, indicates the number of output neurons. It's set to 100 by default. So click here, type 1 on your keyboard, and press enter. Now the number of output neurons was reduced to 1. For logistic regression, that's all you need to edit. Design of logistic regression is complete. Now we have been able to load data and design the neural network. I want to put the training into action. When you press the run training button, you will see a message saying that you need to save the project before you start training. In that case, please save the project you just created with an appropriate file name. As discussed in the setup part, the Neural Network Console does not support double byte character sets, so be careful to save your project in a folder whose name does not contain double byte character sets. Once you save your project, the Neural Network begins its training. The same as logistic regression training, please check if these curved lines of the training results appear or not. If any error appears, there might have been mistakes in the process of assigning dataset or neural network designing, so please double check by going back to Edit tab or Dataset tab. Once the training is done, the next step is to run the evaluation. Press the Run Evaluation button allows you to do it. For example, by checking confusion matrix, we can find that it was 95% accurate. In the Neural Network Console, you can create a new project by Create Project, load the dataset for training in the Dataset tab, and design the Neural Network in the Edit tab. All that's left to do is press the Run Training button, and you'll be able to create an image classifier. The neural network we just trained was a one-layer neural network, so we would like to make it multi-layered. The next thing to design will be a two-layer deep neural network called a multi-layer perceptron. In the previous neural network, there were only input affine sigmoid and binary cross entropy. On the other hand, this neural network contains an affine and an activation function as an intermediate layer under input. 
Now let's design this neural network. We are going to train the two-layer neural network. We have already designed single-layer neural network, so we will edit it to make it two-layer neural network. There are many ways to do this, but the easiest one is to rain select the bottom three layers like this to make room for a new layer. Then drag and drop a new affine layer and an activation function here. You connect them like this, then it's now a two-layer neural network. It consists of an input layer of 28 by 28 inches, intermediate layers of 100 neurons, and finally a layer with one neuron representing either 4 or 9. Now that the design is complete, let's run the training and the evaluation as we did earlier. Run the evaluation when the training is complete. The result is 95.4%, a slight improvement in performance. Now let's go back to the Edit tab and try other configurations as well. For example, the output of this affine layer, which is the number of neurons in the first intermediate layer, is initially 100 neurons, but these two can be changed. For example, it can be increased to 300 neurons. This time I use 10 gauge, but there are various activation functions available, so you can use other activation functions as well. For example, this activation function can be deleted with this delete key, and you can use an activation function called ReLU. If you new work network a little, then again execute training and check the accuracy and execute evaluation. For this kind of trial and error process, we try various combinations of functions to find out what combination achieves high performance. This is the trial and error work of deep learning. This brings the accuracy from 95.2% at first to 97%. And in the Neural Network Console, you can easily compare the neural networks you've trained in the past. First neural network we trained was a single-layer neural network. The result was 95.2%. For the second trained neural network, we made it two layers, used the activation function 10H, and made the number of neurons in the intermediate layer 100 neurons and the result was 95.4%. And just now, setting the number of the neurons for the intermediate layer as 300 and changing an activation function to ReLU, we can easily see that the performance improved to 97%. Graphs of training results are also available for comparison. If you right-click on this single-layer neural network we first trained and select Open Learning Curve for comparison, you will see this graph overlaid. When you run this Open Learning Curve for comparison and display the other training results, the two graphs are superimposed like this. In contrast to the results of the single-layer neural network, the results of the two-layer neural network show a much lower error. I'm sure you've seen how easy it is to create an image classification project using the Neural Network Console. This time we tried just three configurations, however, please try changing the number of neurons, increasing layers, or using other activation functions etc. and find better performing configuration. Next time, I would like to edit the two-layer neural network I created this time and remake it into a four-layer convolutional neural network aiming for even higher performance.